when you talk to most people, and I have to say a lot of clinical psychologists and therapists, and you ask them what epilepsy is, they have this idea that everyone with epilepsy has tonic-clonic seizures, right? But seizures can be really diverse. Among psychologists, unfortunately, there isn't generally a great understanding of the diversity of the epilepsies, which is a real issue considering that a large percentage of people with epilepsy will need to see a psychologist at some point in their lives. Today, star neuropsychologist and academic Vaughan Bell of UCL will list and explain to us just some of the complexities of people affected by the epilepsies and why it is absolutely crucial for psychologists to understand and consider these. My name's uh, Vaughan Bell. I'm a clinical psychologist. I work between psychosis and neuropsychiatry services in the NHS and I'm also an academic where I mainly research neuropsychiatric disorders. Fabulous. Uh, we certainly need you. So we're going to talk about epilepsy and psychiatric disorders, obviously, today. Um, and we know that epilepsy, um, as well as psychiatric disorders, are very diverse in presentation. Could you tell us a little bit about that, different seizure types, etc.? Yeah, so I guess one of the things I'm most interested in is thinking about getting clinical psychologists to understand epilepsy a little bit better. Because, um, you know, lots of people with epilepsy will work with clinical psychologists or therapists and so on and i guess one of the first things that will be really useful to understand is just that epilepsy is is really diverse right so uh, when you talk to most people and i have to say a lot of clinical psychologists and therapists and you ask them what epilepsy is they have this idea that everyone with epilepsy has tonic clonic seizures right yeah. they have they tense up and they lose consciousness and they fall over and shake and of course, that is uh, the sort of seizures that quite a lot of people have. But, uh, you know, seizures can be really diverse how, in how they affect people, in how people feel, in how they're triggered. Um, they can, they can uh, you know, cause very specific sorts of mental sensations. People can be completely conscious during them. People can, in absence seizures, kind of, um, you know, lose consciousness, but but to, you know, not realize it. Um they're, they're really, you know, real, really diverse in terms of their causes. And I think sometimes this kind of stereotype, really, that everybody has tonic clonic seizures, um, you know, gets in the way of people understanding the, the diversity of people and the diversity of experiences in epilepsy. Thank you. Wonderfully put. I couldn't agree more. Um, and going to the mental health side of things, or, or sometimes actually I'm wondering, should we separate um, neurology, epileptology and mental health because they're so closely linked? Uh, could you tell us about the, the casual pathways between uh, mental health problems and the epilepsies, please? It's a really interesting question, right? And it's, it's really based on um, the finding that mental health problems are much more common in people with epilepsy than people without epilepsy. And so, uh, you know, when you, when you mention this to people, sometimes the first thing they think is, oh, it must be because epilepsy is like messing your brain up somehow. Yeah, and, and, and that's how it's explained. But actually, there's a lot of things going on there. All right, so if, if we think about, just in general, what sort of things might cause mental health problems, well, actually, we know there's lots of different and diverse causes. So just having your life chances affected, let's say, you know, so unemployment, um, you know, dealing with other people's reactions and stigma, which we know is something really important in terms of, uh, you know, epilepsy, um, uh, you know, perhaps, um, you know, struggling with day-to-day -day tasks that maybe if you've had a recent onset of epilepsy uh, is something you didn't, uh, you know, need to think about before. Um, so, you know, it affecting your life chances in, in, in this broader sense, just making life more challenging is going to be one really key um, cause. Another cause is that, you know, epilepsy genuinely can affect the brain circuits involved in um, supporting, modulating, um, processing emotions and perception and behavior. So epilepsy and epileptic seizures can have a direct effect in terms of the aspects of the brain, which manage the important processes that manage our mental health. So there is definitely this, this direct effect as well. 
another really important thing is is medication actually and you know medication can have an, a number of effects on mental health and and it's not always the case that you know medication makes you better or worse it can it can depend it depends a little bit on the person and it depends always on a a balance you know what we're trying to do is maximize the benefits and minimize the the negative effects sometimes that can mean actually that some medications can impact on your mental health and ideally that should be a decision between the person who's treating you usually a neurologist but not not uh, not always and not all parts of the world and for some people perhaps being a bit more depressed but having better seizure control might be a trade off they're prepared to accept for other people it might be the exact exact opposite they'd rather have seizures or more seizures than feel depressed to whatever because the levels yeah. of depression and anxiety uh, differ depending upon a whole spectrum of things which you've mentioned just like seizure frequency seizure severity whatever that might be seizure type etc right exactly so and and, and that equation um you know we know there's some general findings but that equation might be different for different people and of course the side effects of medication and the impact of of epilepsy on individuals is going to differ um and so that's that's something that uh you know is really important and i guess with 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 my mission to try and you know better inform clinical psychologists and therapists these you know thinking about these different pathways is really important right because it's really easy to think oh well it's just all about the challenges people face or it's just all about the impact on the brain or it's just all about getting better seizure control um but actually it varies from from person to person um and understanding these different interacting factors and understanding how they interact for that person is is going to be really key i think 100% and just going back just quickly to the cognitive issues which are frequently experienced as a result of medications or well, actually as a result of the mental health issues as well but also the result of uh well postictal sometimes because of the seizures and then because of the mental health issues so there are lots of things that can actually impact one's mental health directly or indirectly and we know across um well i was going to say across neurological disorders but actually across illnesses and conditions and mental health problems in general often cognitive problems which is really a fancy name for difficulties with memory concentration and problem solving actually we know some of these can be the most disabling oh, totally and restrictive restricting for the person you know say for instance they might develop an epilepsy in later life you could feel that you've lost your entire career for instance if your memory is impacted you know that you just can't concentrate or oh, there are so many factors and the loss can be extreme yeah and and the, you know the impact on individuals is variable but of course you know it's for many people it's the single most important thing as you say right so you know imagine if you were uh, you know doing your job or look, working with your family or looking after your kids or even just the stuff you enjoy on a day-to-day -day basis right your your hobbies your passions imagine if your memory became 50% worse and how would that impact on the things that are really important to you well of course that can that can be a real struggle for people and i guess what a lot of therapists and clinical psychologists don't necessarily appreciate as much as they could is that th these can be quite disabling they can also be really emotionally difficult in terms of having um you know aspects of yourself internal aspects of yourself that you rely on um suddenly change and i, I think not all psychologists and therapists appreciate necessarily that actually there's a real trade off between medication and seizures and side effects um you know and and having seizures on the whole is bad for your cognition um some medications particularly at high doses are bad for your cognition um and uh you know not being able to do lots of useful and important activities that impact on your mental health or just affect your health of course is not great for your cognition so it's not just a case of uh you know medication seizure control at all costs it's not just a case of uh you know um you know dealing with one particular aspect of your life at all costs it's 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 really 
you know finding finding what works best for that person at that time which may change through people's lives of course talking about people who are seen outside of epilepsy clinics sometimes that can be okay but sometimes especially if one has refractory epilepsy or significant you know say cognitive issues or mental health issues it can be really important to actually see a specialist what are your thoughts about the impact of seeing a specialist or not one of the things that is is a real rule of thumb in, in healthcare in general but one of the things that i think lots of people outside specialist services don't understand applies equally to epilepsy right which is the majority of people with epilepsy are not seen in specialist epilepsy services and and this is because epilepsy is relatively common and actually specialist epilepsy services exist for specific things often like first diagnosis or management of pe you know complex problems and most people with epilepsy don't go to specialist services because they have no need of them but they still might have problems related to their epilepsy and so you know in terms of mental health services given what we've talked about in terms of mental health pro you know problems being much more common in people with epilepsy for all of the reasons we've talked about right in, you know for the impact on life chances and and the experience and you know the effect on the brain actually people with epilepsy are going to be quite common and are quite common in mental health services um and you know sometimes uh when i train clinical psychologists um you know i say all right who has experience of working with people with epilepsy and there's you know kind of silence or one or two hands in the room and then i and then i go well okay if you work in a mental health team roughly how many people on your books have epilepsy and i'm like oh yeah yeah and there's this other person and but epilepsy is just often kind of forgotten right it's it's not something that is kind of i wouldn't say people think it's not our job but it, they often think it's not our priority right and it's not a cool topic as of yet to be studying right or to be thinking about not like some other diseases like we hear a lot and and this is right that we hear a lot about parkinson's ms and stuff these people deserve the attention and care um that they are receiving and often more <laughs> But what about people affected by the epilepsies, which is an even more common condition? Yeah, and I have to say, you know, my, my own profession has to accept a little bit of responsibility for that because a lot of traditional narrative in our profession has been to uh, talk about a real distinction between organic problems and then mental health problems, which are meaningful reaction to life events, right? And this is an absolute false dichotomy and i think it does it in some ways it's it's quite harmful because it really kind of puts people with epilepsy into a category of people who don't have meaningful reactions to life events i don't think people in my profession who have, have kind of you know really used this distinction um are, are intending to do that i think it's an unintended effect Nevertheless, I do think that there is um, a kind of tradition in the clinical psychology and psychotherapy profession, which very much aims to humanize mental health problems with, with perfectly good intentions, while unintentionally, um, you know, actually dehumanizing the mental health problems of people who have neurological disorders and epilepsy and so on and so i think what it's done is it's led to a bit of a perception that these are kind of mechanical neurological issues for which our tools as clinical psychologists dealing with people's experiences and emotions and 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 so on uh, don't apply very well and I, I think if there's one thing I'm really keen to get across is that, you know, pe people with epilepsy are also people, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, just just because, uh, you know, th there may be some direct impact of seizures on the brain to be aware of. But these these are also human experiences and th having that does lead and is relevant to all of the rest of our emotions our perceptions our understanding um, our behaviors and and are equally as relevant to our work as as clinical psychologists and therapists 
Thank you so much to Vaughan, who is a real star when it comes to understanding the diversity of experiences of people with an epilepsy, how impactful mental health illnesses can be upon our lives, and being here to educate other psychologists and help them treat us more effectively. Make sure that you tune in next week to hear the second half of our conversation, where Vaughan speaks about seizures often being mistaken for something else. Don't miss it.